welcome to View from the Top. I am Modeli Sharafa Isof. I'm going to begin today's program with a short quote from the book The Accidental Public Servant, written by Nasser El Rufai, who is now governor of Kaduna State. I quote The public service has become short term in its vision, self centered in policy formulation, and corrupt in program implementation. You know, very sadly, Inefficiency, nepotism, favoritism, bloated workforce, bureaucratic bottlenecks, and corruption have become synonymous with public service in Nigeria. The civil service is still considered inefficient, and the attempts made by several panels set up by government have had little effect on its reputation. One of Nigeria's most respected civil servants, Chief Philip Asiodo, once said the obvious. A government may have good policies, but to deliver on them, the government needs a good and proficient civil service. Chief Philip Afsiodu very kindly joins me on View from the Top today, and I wish to thank him sincerely. Thank you very much for joining us. Thank you. Thank you. We'll be discussing how to reinvent the public service for growth and effective service delivery, and we'll also be discussing the state of the nation, and that will be right after this brief biography. Born on 26 February 1934, Chief Philip Pasiodu attended King's College, Lagos, before proceeding to the Queen's College, Oxford, where he read philosophy, politics, and economics. Chief Pasiodu entered the Nigerian Foreign Service at the age of 23 and rose to be Chancellor of Nigerian Mission to the United Nations in New York at the dawn of Nigeria's independence. He was also Nigerian representative in the Provisional Secretariat of the newly formed Organization of African Unity, OAU. He moved over to the Domestic Civil Service in 1964, where he was appointed Federal Permanent Secretary. In 1983, Chief Asiodu was appointed Special Advisor to President Shehu Shagari and Chairman Cabinet Committee on Economic Affairs, returning to a similar post of Chief Economic Advisor to the President Obasanjo in 1999. In between that, he was Secretary or Minister for Petroleum and Mineral Resources in the Transitional Council of 1992-1993. And between 2001 and 2005, he served as a member of the Honorary Presidential Advisory Council on Investment. Chief Asiodu was a founding member of the People's Democratic Party, PDP, he was a trustee of the party, and in 1999, unsuccessfully contested nomination as the party's presidential candidate. So you have been economic advisor to two former presidents, from President uh, Shagari and President Obasan Job. If you were in that position today, what would you be telling President Muhammadu Buhari, given the state of the economy? What I would say now, as one tried to say then, is that Nigeria not make sustained progress and continuing progress. We must return to accept that we should have long-term plan, perspective, perspective plan. We must go back to a national vision accepted by all so that there will be continuity. Because what has troubled Nigeria is a great deal is discontinuity. A group comes, it wants to start anew. It rejects what has been done by the previous. It does not re de debrief. And if every four years you start a new foundation, when will you reach the roof? So we must go back as a country, subscribe to a vision, have leadership committed to it, and leadership which tries to organize succession committed to it so that we have continuity. You played uh, high profile and leadership roles in the planning and implementation of Nigeria's like online oil and gas policies, beginning with uh, negotiations for Nigeria's admission into OPEC in 1971, the establishment of the NNOC, now NNPC, uh, the establishment of LNG plants, uh, the establishment of uh, a couple of refineries, and so forth. And you were also petroleum minister during the short lived uh, interim national government. What no, were the the transitional government. government. The, 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 the transi transitional government. Thank you very much. What were the issues that you had to deal with then? 
and how do they differ from the ones that we currently have now? Well, you know, uh, at the beginning, 71, uh, the oil industry was dominated by the West, seven majors. They had kept oil prices unchanged and practically revenues to oil producing com countries unchanged from the end of the Second World War in 1945 till about 1971. Now in 71, OPEC decided that if you like enough was enough, that OPEC countries must seek greater participation and improve revenues due to them. When Mossadegh in Iran tried to change matters in the late 50s, you remember how he was removed and eventually disgraced and so forth and so on. But this time, OPEC, the countries together, said we must ask for a minimum of 25%. So the negotiations started on that basis. But we in Nigeria had produced under the 7074 plan. We had said that in significant industries, public participation must be at least 35%. Of course, we in Nigeria had said in that plan that for strategic industries, Niger the state will take at least 55 percent. We are not particularly concerned 55 or 60, because really by the time you have 51 percent control, you have your regulations, you negotiate your fiscal terms properly. The more interesting thing, and this is the sad tragedy in Nigeria, is how to add value to your oil and gas. This we have disgracefully tragically failed to do, you know, that is more important than 51, 55 and so forth and so on. So how did we arrive at where we are at now in, in, in the oil? Well, industry? what happened was after the 75 removal of General Gowan, there was the abandonment of the decision that we shouldn't give private concessions. In fact, unfortunately, some of the findings which knock through its uh, early exploratory work had found oil were given to some private people. Hence, we have this situation where you have, you know, some private people with, uh, you know, very profitable uh, reserves of oil and some without. But when I went back in 93, I didn't reopen the question. It had been closed. And this will be it. What are your thoughts on the petroleum industry bill? Personally, I thought it was um, not exactly necessary. You will see that in the federal government publication of 2009, they stated that uh, they were going to bring all the 16 different important legislations on oil into one document. One. Two, they said for good measure that this is the first time it's happening anywhere in the world. Then the ideas they wanted to achieve, you know, uh, to, cre to create a better enabling environment, they said, for investment, in oil, in oil and gas, making sure that Nigeria derived optimal revenues and so forth and so on. But you will find a contradiction in the PIB because the minister was still going to be the chairman of NNOC. You are going to be the regulator. You are going to be chairman of NNOC. When you now go back to the PIB, We've wasted about 10 years. We've lost opportunities because decisions have been delayed needlessly. So to me, it's a great disservice to this nation that instead of using the existing agreements to improve your conditions while you're trying new legislation, you keep waiting as if at the expense of the country, you're trying to force legislation to. So whatever we do, 
we must go back to a situation in which in the public interest, people are ready to process project proposals quickly under the rules, existing incentives transparently offered, under the rules again, the flexibility to look again at changes in fiscal terms you have to do so that the country is not cheated. But we still create, in this new fiercely competitive environment, create an enabling environment for us to continue to receive investments, not only in resources, but the latest technology in the exploitation of our oil and gas. We have to take a break now. Please join us again.